What's up? <laughs> Just playing. All right, boys. Buckle up. We've got a good one today. <clears throat> if you're new here, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the whole, like, uh, this fascination of homeless people. Um, you know, like these videos that pop up where it's just like zombie land. You know, here's this guy, Nick Johnson's got a page. All of his best videos are all, you know, like this one. I visited Skid Row, the homeless capital of America. <sighs> this guy up here, Philly streets, you know, it's like, I don't know what this the fascination uh, with it is. And I actually lived in LA and I got to tell you, I'd have people visit and they'd be like, hey, you think we can go take a trip through Skid Row, you know what I mean? Roll up a couple joints, <sighs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'd be like, yeah, sure, I guess. This dude's cool, German in Venice, but all of his most popular videos are all homeless people shit. And I'm guilty too. I've actually interviewed a couple of homeless people uh, on this channel uh, back when I got no views. Um, and I'll plug some of that in here, but because I'm curious too. But this guy, Soft White Underbelly, his whole channel's based He's on that. Basically, um, but there's all there's there's one thing in common with all these people, and you probably know the answer to it. So, would you take a hit, relax, and uh, let's let's dive in deep here. This was actually one of the dudes I interviewed. He was homeless for ten years, and uh, let's see exactly why he was homeless. I was going to jail like every week or every other week. I had ten felonies. Holy and, shit! A uh, hundred and forty misdemeanors. But there was the reason why there's so many is because they're in one incarceration I could have seven misdemeanors over the period of ten years. This is what's holding up my license. You yeah, know what I mean, I'm working on it right now. I'm working on a lot of stuff right now. You know? Sounds like a sounds like a lot. Basically, you've been arrested, hundred and fifty uh, oh, uh, times. No, I know exactly how many how times. Many? It's a little more than eighty. Damn. Yeah. I've been arrested three times. And that yeah. was enough for Jack. The law. True story love that I found in skateboarding and that whole, you know, like rush of like, oh, I'm scared of this trick and you overcome the fear and you oh, land it dude. needed to be replaced with something. And I found that in, you know, drugs and alcohol. I mean, I really found it there where it was actually better to me than skateboarding. That's why I ended up quitting. Once I turned my life around in 2017, I needed to uh, find out what I was going to do with my life. Yeah. So basically that dude actually has been off the streets for, you know, six, seven years now. Um, but he was homeless and it, it's, so when I see things like this, you know, three things you can do to solve homelessness. And I know this guy means well, this channel is pretty cool. He interviews homeless people, but, um, you, you the only way you're going to solve it is what are you going to do? Get rid of drugs and alcohol. Anyone in here? You know what I mean? That's, that's the number one thing. I'm sure there's like a sliver of people who are homeless do you know because just hard times got kicked out of their apartment you know i myself have lived in a car before for about three months but like i wasn't addicted to drugs it was just circumstance and i had money but like living in la i was like i'm not wasting my money on this shit that's why i'm not homeless anymore because i'm not on drugs and alcohol nor have i well, i've drank before i've made some mistakes but Anyways, let's see what this guy's got to say about solving homelessness here, okay? Better be talking about drugs. For every $100 increase in median rent, homelessness increases 9%. As rents go up across the country, more people are becoming homeless. Homelessness is a symptom, not a cause. If we don't fix the affordable housing crisis, racism provide a living wage. Yo, my home dude just said racism. Hey, it's still a real thing, though. Fix a broken criminal justice system, fix foster care, domestic violence, provide better mental illness and addiction support. We will never solve homelessness. Yeah, and unfortunately, he's right. We're not going to. I just think it's going to keep getting worse and worse. Um, if you're new here, I like to read some of you guys' comments from previous videos. Keep it fun, keep it light, keep it loose. Um, this dude, I didn't have too many videos talking about homeless people. So, you know, I had to kind of dig deep for some of these comments. This dude goes, I'm 40 in the beginning, uh, in the beginning of a divorce. So I'm about to move into my 07 SUV. I make a little over 60 K a year, but after taxes and future ch child support, there wouldn't be much left to rent or buy a place. Luckily, there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to live comfortably in a car. Um, and the truth is, is that's, that does happen to people. 
and that's van life. I did a whole video on this. A lot of people just sick of it, but those people aren't like drug addicts and, and, and major alcoholics. Um, this is one of those videos, I think it was titled like zombies in Philadelphia or something. But the truth is, is this is drugs. Let's be real here. Let's keep it 101 Dalmatians with each other. I mean, look at this. <laughs> Yo, homie's sleeping, standing up. <laughs> I mean, like, no, no possible way this is just because the rent's too high. Like, no way. No possible way. And I get it. I get the fascination with these videos. This doesn't even feel real. This looks like some type of uh, <laughs> crazy movie or something. Or like a video game. You know what I mean? So I get the fascination with it. But this whole like trying to solve homelessness thing. I, I, I don't think it's. There's anything more to. There's, I don't think there's much you can do about it. You know what I mean? Like panhandling. I, I don't know. You guys leave your thoughts on that. And, uh, and I get the fascination. It's like the same thing of like looking at people who are really rich on yachts. It's like something you'll maybe never experience. And then, you know, for me, I'm like, I'm not going homeless. Like, fuck all that. You know what I mean? Like, nah. Here's another homeless guy I uh, interviewed. And this dude was a little bit different because he didn't seem like he was hopped up on drugs or alcohol. And I would pick him up once in a while, take him to get some food and shit. But this is why he ended up not even getting a job right here. He talks about panhandling. That's what they call it. What's well, like your normal day panhandling? Like, what are you making on this? If you stand out there all day, you can make up to 150 bucks. Yeah, that's like a good day. Yeah, probably on the weekends. Like on the week weekends, well, a week, good well, weekday is probably 60, maybe 70 bucks. That's a good day. Stand out there all day in the sun, you know. What's like a what's like bad day? Uh, like I said, ending up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> um, no money, get arrested, they steal your shoes. Yeah. That's crazy. I can't believe people steal your shoes out there. It's a real thing. There's a lot of mentally ill people out there. I'm not a psychiatrist or nothing, but then take a psychiatrist to see that. Even though I'm and uh, I didn't plug in everything, but like he was basically saying that, you know, going to get a regular job, he will, he'll make more standing out on the corner than he would, you know, because he doesn't have those skills. Like he, he was actually an HVAC person, so you could make a lot of money. But nobody's jumping off the, you know, jumping to hire some 55-year-old man um, who, you know, doesn't even have a car or anything to go work for their HVAC company. Um, and that's the truth. But also, he did inform me that the reason he did go homeless in the first place, although he's sober now, um, was heroin. So that makes sense. And then here's another one. This is like a perfect example of someone who's literally getting help, but they're so hooked on, on drugs that it's like, it's like they're choosing this life. Listen to this one. This one's from this guy, Brandon Buckingham's channel. Um, all of his most popular videos are him in the hood or doing a homeless person type of thing, which this one is in the streets of Philly. So this is Rich right here. Check this one out. Like a recovery house. There's nobody right now leading us all in the direction that we need to go. It's kind of like once they get their money, like they get a couple thousand for each person in there, then that's all they care about. You know what I mean? They're not trying to give us to that second step, which is like help us find a job. Like help reassimilate back into regular yep. society. Yes. You know, the drug is so powerful that I need more help. Uh, it's tough, man. I, oh, I'm looking for a way out, man. I, I don't know. I know it doesn't help with me doing drugs. My message is just, just talk about it. Just try to talk about it. This, this kind of helps. I might go get high right after this. I am going to, but I appreciate it. You guys pulling me to the side. I, I really am thankful for this moment. It's just, it's, it's, you can't, it's, <laughs> you know, he's going, all they care about is the money, but then it's like, all you care about is the drugs. And I'm, I'm empathetic to it. You know, I get it. I know what addiction's like. We do a whole damn video on addiction. You know, I've been addicted to cigarettes, fucking vapes. You know, I guess you could say weed. You know, I don't really want to say it's an addiction, but when you do it every day for years on end, you know, it's kind of like, what do you call that? Um, but this one goes, was another comment from the van life video I did. He goes, 
There is an elderly homeless epidemic. No one gives a shit. Uh, the cool thing about uh, being elderly and that happening to you is that, um, like my dad, I had to put him in like a uh, nursing home, like a uh, assisted living, right? And most of the people that live there, it's all government funded. And as long as you're over the age of like 62, I think it is, or 63, um, you could basically get in there with no money. Um, and most of them are not drug addicts. That's why they live there. So that's kind of the, the only thing about being an elderly person. There's going to be help for you. Um, but if you're just doing drugs, like you, you just don't care. That's just how it goes. Like anybody who's watching this ever done like heroin or anything? Because I know a few people that have done it. And they tell me the same shit. It's like once, once you get that, woo, that euphoric feeling, which I don't know. I've never done hard drugs. Well, I did mushrooms once. That was trippy. Ended up uh, basically quitting high school after that. Uh, <laughs> but they say the same thing every time. Once you're on it, you just don't care anymore. You just don't care. And uh, I, that's just what it is. It's basic math. Like, I don't think there's anything more to it. Uh, I know the cost of living is bananas, but nobody who's sober is going to, I mean, very few people who are sober are going to do something of this nature. Like very few people. Um, we're just not there yet in society. And this one's from a guy, Nick Johnson. Most of his most popular videos are all, you know, homeless shit, homeless encampments, um, He's got a cool channel, but like right here is a perfect example. This is something I experienced in LA trying to help my dad out. Uh, I went to a place like this. I think this is um, where you go get like food stamps and all that. So like, first of all, just look at this. Okay. This is like every ghetto area ever. It's always just dirty. You know, I live hood adjacent. I actually want to make a video on that. Um, Cause like where I live, it looks nice, but it's not. Anyways. But these places, here's the thing, right? Um, you know that saying, it's like, uh, you know, don't feed the birds. They'll keep coming back for more. Well, this is what's happening in the homeless community. Call me crazy, but especially in Cali, you could walk in there same day, walk into this place, tell them I don't have a job, any of stuff. They give you food stamps, and if you're really fucked up, they'll give you straight up money same day. And they'll give that to you every month. Why would you go get a job? You could live in paradise. But that's what it is. It's just like you keep feeding them and they keep coming back. It's it's sad, but that's what it is. And, and L.A. really is like this. Not everywhere, but like legit, man. You could be sitting on your, you know, I'd be sitting on my porch and somebody would be walking by just asking me for money. You know, it's like there's no escape. This one was rich. I've experienced this a few times where people literally will set up a damn living room on the side of the road. And I'm not going to front. I'd hang out there at least for a little bit, you know, smoke a bogey, hang out. Um, <laughs> you got to give them a little imagination here. You know, the boy can dream. But anyways, you guys leave your thoughts on this stuff. I just, I've had the people request this, me to do a video on this and my thoughts of homeless people. And you know what? I used to like really care. And I would always give money to homeless people, um, try and give them food, uh, all that. And you know what? It, it turns out that if I keep feeding them, it's never enough. It's never enough, especially with a couple of them that live by me. They see me all the time now and they're like, I'm their friend. And I just don't give them money anymore. They just expect it um, because I gave it to them a couple times. And my fucking dumbass had to give them like a 10 or a $20 bill. So, of course, they see me coming up and they're like, oh, what's up, bro? You know, like I'm their best friend. Uh, this guy was talking about uh, the van life stuff. This dude goes, uh, four years ago, a two-bedroom was 1100 Now it's 2000 A one-bedroom was 875 Now it's 1460 Living in a van down by the river has become a major flex. Yeah. And, uh, but like, we're not really talking about van life here, but that's kind of like the next step. Um, but I feel like if you're not on drugs or alcohol, you could easily live in a van down by the river instead of in a tent outside of a Chipotle. You know what I mean? This dude goes, I've been telling my buddies for the last uh, year or so that the whole tiny house slash van life trends are a massive psyop to convince people that not owning anything is not only acceptable, but encouraged. 
Yeah, the, and I put this comment in here. I know you're thinking, like, dude, chill with the van life. It's like, no, I won't. I love van life. Um, I put this in here, though, because this is the same kind of concept. It's like the more and more people who just are on drugs and are homeless and you could just walk into a store and get syringes um, and shoot up and get EBT and free shit, you know, they're, it's like encouraging them. That's what it is. Um, I, I didn't make it up. Um, and in that dude, Brandon Bunkingham cha uh, channel, one of his most recent videos, uh, zombies living in Philly or something, uh, the guy he was interviewing who said, I'm about to go do drugs right now. Um, he actually filmed the whole thing, just filmed him shooting up some kind of tranquilizer shit. And I was like, wow, this is riveting content. Um, but that's what it is. That's what it is. And in the, you know, it's, this guy goes, people are doing this life out of necessity and by choice. People are exiting the matrix. Matrix. We are, we are tired. I'm sorry. I can't read. Yeah. I think the same thing goes for homelessness. I, I almost think 99% of it um, is self-inflicted or an actual choice. Because the gentleman I showed you in the beginning, his name's Vladi. I'll leave all these people's information down below. Um, you know, he even told me. He was like, it was a choice. Like, I could stay out, get high. I don't care where I sleep as long as I get my drugs. And then eventually one day he snapped out of it and he's been off the streets seven years. And now he works at a recovery place. Yeah, it's perfect. But this right here, it's all a choice. It's a choice. I lived in LA. I, I'll, I'll tell you right now, that's a full-blown choice. We're going to end on this one here. He goes, this guy Brian goes, I'm currently living in my van, not because I'm down. I make 60 k but I refuse to spend 1600 bucks a month in rent. Uh, it's just nuts. I got zero to... Uh, he goes in deeper, but, but that's like the fine line. And when I see stuff like this, like I'm going to solve homelessness, it's like I commend them for trying. But like, dude, you're never going to put out the liquor business and drugs. You just not, it's, you, you can't, you just can't. They, there's too much money involved and it keeps people, uh, you know, keeps people entertained and preoccupied. Why would they want a bunch of people doing well? Uh, that wouldn't be good. Anyways, you guys leave your thoughts. Um, I had a lot of you request this video, so I made it. Shout out to all my Patreon members. I appreciate everybody. I got to update this. Um, we had a few new Patreon members jump in. I appreciate all you guys. Going to be posting more to the Patreon coming up. And God, yeah, good talk. I'm going to go be extremely grateful for this lovely house that I live in. And uh, anyways, God, quit feeding the birds. Unreal.